if you go to today's Moodle page, let's see here. First of all, I've given you some notes on using gradients. We're going to learn how to change up colors of objects. Rather than having one solid color, they're going to have multiple colors in it. To do that, that's the gradation. And also, if you weren't here, be sure to download the Monster Project steps. These are your step-by-step -step instructions for the project we're working on. So we're doing two things today. First of all, we're going to do a simple um, gradient exercise. And this will give, tell you and give you an opportunity to practice um, making gradients of color. And then there's going to be the project itself. Um, the gradient exercise, I want you all to work on this and finish this today. It's really simple. It's something that shouldn't take you very long. And as soon as you're finished with this, then jump in and do the monster exercise. You're going to print the uh, shape monster out. You're going to upload the gradient exercise to the gradient project here as well. So don't print that one off. This is what they look like. First of all, here's the notes that talk about gradients and how to make them in the different palettes. I'm going to go through and uh, tell you everything about it. And these are the different page documents oops, for the different step-by-step uh, -step instructions. Pay very close attention to these instructions because I'm, I'm being very specific about how I want you to build it. There's some flexibility. You can change it up a little bit. But when I say to do things for a certain color and have it at a certain angle, this is really what I'm looking for. I do have one correction I want you to uh, be aware of. On number six, and I even wrote this on the board if you forget, on number six, the first thing I'm doing is asking you to use the pen tool. I don't want you to use the pen tool. I want you to use the line tool to do this. We haven't gone over the pen well enough to, uh, to be able to use it, so we're just going to use the line tool to draw off a line instead of using the pen. We'll jump into that later this semester. So this first one is the gradient exercise. I'll open this up in Illustrator. It's an AI file, so whoops, there we go. If I double click, this is what it should look like. <coughs> I accidentally opened up Dreamweaver. We're not making websites. Okay. And with this exercise document, you're going to learn how to change the fill color of different objects that are created. Now you know when you create an object, you've got two different swatches to pay attention to. The one on top is the fill color. And the one behind it, this one, is your stroke color or your outline color. We we'll want to make sure that the fill color is on top for everything that we're doing. If it's on top, that means any changes that we make are going to affect just the fill color. Let's see. A palette that you need to have open is your gradient palette. If you don't see it on the right-hand side, it looks like this. I'm going to click and drag it off so we can actually be using it. And then, like I said, if you don't see it, you can always go to Window and down to gradient, and there it is, checked off from there. Everything that we're going to be doing to control these colors will be found in this particular uh, document once it's set up. So I'm going to select one of my objects, and any object that you create can be the same. I'm just going to select this first one. If you can, uh, watch on another screen. So, um, where was I? Okay, select an object. Right now you see it's a solid fill color. If you look down at the very bottom, uh, just below the, the swatches, there's the three different uh, little icons you can click on. The middle one will change it from a solid color to a gradient color. And by default, the gradient is white to black. And they've got two different colors to pick from. Check out our gradient palette box once it's set up. To give you kind of just a layout of what the, the gradient box looks like, first of all, you have two different types of gradients you can choose from. A linear one, which means it goes in a straight line from one side to the other side. And the radial one goes from a center point and radiates outward. And these are the two very important things to pay attention to when choosing whether it's linear or radial gradient. I'll change it back to linear. The next thing is, uh, of course, there's an angle you can set it at. Right now it goes at a zero degree angle, so from left to right. And with this one you can change it to a 90 degree, 95 or whatever, or a negative degree. And you can see the starting point is going off at a different angle from there. Or you can type in a specific number. So if I needed it to be exactly 90 degrees, I can type that in, hit return, and now it's straight up and down. All simple? Everybody following? Here's the fun part. How do you change the colors of a gradient? There's a couple of things you can do. First of all, notice you've got a starting swatch 
and you've got an ending swatch. There, all, there should always be at least two different colors. And you can move these along. This is called your, um, your swatch bar or your color bar. You can move the starting and stopping points and notice that it reflects where it starts and stops on the, um, the line itself or the object that I'm working on. To change the color, double click on this swatch and it opens up a color picker. And you can choose from the predefined swatches, so if I needed it to be a specific color green, I can click that green and then it changes that color on there. If I want it to be even more specific, I can choose this icon and then type in a specific color, CMYK or RGB, depending on what color mode you're working with. I can change the color sliders. To get back to your uh, predefined swatches, that's what this one is. Click on it and you can pull up predefined swatches from there. So if I wanted to say this one needs to go from green to blue, so I'll choose green. And then if I click off, it'll go away. Double click on this one and then choose blue and then it'll go from green to blue for that one. All cool? Very, very simple, easy thing to work with. Now you don't have to have just two swatches in here. If you want to add a color swatch to it, say you wanted three or four different ones, watch my mouse as I get closer to the, uh, to the color line. Notice the little plus sign that's next to it? If I click on the color line now, I've added another swatch to it. And I can double click and change up that color swatch as well. And as long as I have this object selected, the, uh, the changes will be made. If I don't have it selected, and I start making changes to it, nothing's going to happen because I don't have any objects selected. So very important that you do have whatever you want um, affected to be selected. If you want to, of course, move it around, you can click and drag. Also, notice the little um, diamonds at the top. You can change the rate at which it's changing. So in ca this case, if I wanted it to go from green and then very quickly turn red, I can change this top part and move it around as well. And these will stay in position from there. To delete a swatch, you can click on the swatch and simply drag it off of the color line. So click and drag and it's gone. So to add it, if I wanted to add multiple ones, simply click where it's clicked. You can click and drag to remove it. Another way you can do it is to click once on the swatch and then click the little trash can on the right hand side and that will delete the swatch as well. It's faster just to click and drag once it's on there. Any questions so far what I've done? Simple, simple stuff that we're working from. So for this particular exercise, you're going to look at what I'm asking you to do for each one. I want a linear gradient. I want it to go from white to green to blue. First thing you have to do is to change it from a solid color to a fill, or excuse me, to a gradient fill. And then set up your gradient that you want. Double click, choose white, and click off, double click, choose green, eh, green's already selected, we'll do a lighter green, and then double click and you got blue already loaded up from there. So those are the easy ones. Let's check out the radial gradients. If I select this one, we'll turn on gradient again. This time, notice that even though it's circular, it's still radial. I'm going to change, excuse me, still linear, I'm going to change it to radial and it goes from the center point out radiating outward that way. Same way with the other ones. I can click and drag and change my starting and stopping points for each of the, um, the colors that I have. Or I can remove them. This time I want it to go from blue. Let's see if we can actually swap up. I've already got a blue. If I keep dragging to a green, dark green. There it is from there. Linear gradient, radial gradient. This time I want you to reposition it using a, a gradient tool. So I'll set this one up, black to red. We'll go quickly. Black to red. In this case, there's actually a tool that can help you create gradients and be a little bit more specific about their starting and stopping points. The gradient tool, if you'll look in your toolbox, it looks like a, um, a rectangle with a gradient in it. With it selected, you can see this is what your shape will look like now. And you get a little gradient bar where you can click and drag and change up the position of things. And even start stopping point and starting point. Or you can click anywhere within here and drag 
and it will start and stop at that particular point. So now it's starting at that point rather than the midpoint, and you're able to change it up and move around as well. And you can move it around where you want it to start and stop. These two points out the uh, edges of it will allow you to change the angle of the radial gradient. And this is only for the radial gradient. Or you can also adjust the rotation of it and the size of it as well. Pretty cool. Stop blowing y'all's mind. Okay. But that's what the gradient tool allows you to do. If I was to choose just a regular linear gradient, I can click and drag and give it a specific line, starting point, and stopping point as well from there. So that's what I want you to do for this one. Choose the radial gradient, reposition it any which way you want. For this last one, this is the mega gradient. This is one I want you to add the full color spectrum to for the entire thing. I'll leave that up to you for how to do that. Any questions you have for me for how to do the gradient exercise? Real, real simple. I just want to give you plenty of practice doing this because for our project, this is what your project is going to be. It's Halloween time, so we're going to make a little shape monster. Using our shapes tools, and in this case, instead of filling it in with just a, uh, a, a solid fill color, we're going to use gradations to recreate this guy. And the step-by-step -step project, or information that I've given you for the project, follow it very closely <coughs> to, um, to recreate every single portion of this. Don't skip ahead. Pay close attention to each thing, because there's usually something important that I want it to be to, uh, to be a specific size. I've already started on it. I'll restart and kind of give you a quick overview of how I want it to, to do. So let me open up my tools. Remember, you can click and drag these off. I'll move my gradient kind of down and out of the way. The colors that I'm using, I'm getting these from our swatches, are these browns right here. So when I say a light tan or a tan color, that's usually what I mean when I say a darker or a mid-tone of brown. This is what I'm looking for from these from here. You don't have to recreate them. Just uh, change it up from there. So the first thing to create the body, I need a rounded rectangle. And I'm asking for it to be a specific size. So how do I get something to be a specific size? Click, click once. So I click once, and from here I can type in the specific one. Three by four and a half, a half inch quarter radius. All right, so that's created. I already had my gradient selected, but let's pretend like it was, uh, it was a solid color. I want to fill it in with a tan to a medium brown, so a light brown. So let's turn on our gradient. Using my gradient here, double click on this one. Choose a light brown and then a yeah, medium brown. That'll work from there. And I want it to be a 90 degree angle, having the darker on the top. So change up 90 degrees. And when I hit return, top to bottom from there. If you'll pay close attention to this, the lower edge is a little bit further in than the upper edge. So y'all tell me, if you had to move just these points inward, which tool should I use? White arrow tool, very good. Use your white arrow tool. I'm going to click and drag over just that corner. And now notice that only these two are filled in, everything else is hollow. When I click and drag, I can move it in just a little bit. So click and drag, same thing for this side, we'll make it even. And so he's a little bit tapered, a little bit narrow to bring it in from there. The eyes, I'll go pretty quickly for these because I think y'all can get the, uh, the hang of it. I do recommend making things off of the monster and then dragging it on top of here. It makes it a little bit easier to select. But the eyes are made up of two perfect circles. So I'll grab my ellipse tool, change my fill color to a dark brown, holding down my shift key, getting that perfect circle. Let's make another circle inside of it that's going to be black. Do you all remember what to hold down if I want to make a circle from the center point? Option. option. Great. Holding down Option, click and drag. I can even use my space bar to get it lined up perfectly. And then to get the two little highlights, those are just two lighter circles that we'll create from the top. Light circle, light circle there. All right, I do need two of them. What's a great way of combining all these together so that I can... Command G for group, great. Command G, so they're grouped. So now when I click and drag, I get both of them. If you hold down your option key, 
you can click and make a copy of things. So now I've got two eyes very quickly made right off there. Is he looking cute already? Cool. Awesome. Uh, the belly. Belly's a really easy. I'm actually going to skip over it. All it is, so what shape is that? Polygon. Seven-sided polygon. You're going to rotate it, place it down there. Let me show you the mouth, because the mouth is probably going to be one of the harder ones to, uh, to recreate. Remember I asked you to change it from instead of using the pen tool to the line tool. The line tool is next to your shapes tools. It looks like this, line segment tool. So we're going to draw just a horizontal line. And it's going to be a dark brown. So let's change our stroke to dark brown. <clears throat> and the thickness up at the top is going to be four points. Next thing we're going to do is use a series of half circles, series of ellipses to create the mouth and to create the two teeth that's inside of here. So the first thing I need to do is to, uh, let's see, use the ellipse tool to create two vertical teeth. So let's grab the ellipse tool. When I say vertical teeth, this is what I'm talking about. It's not a perfect circle, it's just going to be slightly stretched out. And these need to be um, gradient of white to gray. So I'm going to double click, make it white, double click, make it gray. Angle at 90, already set up for there. Here's how we can cut this uh, ellipse in half. I'm going to choose my white arrow tool, and I'm going to delete this top point just by clicking and dragging over it. Got it selected. Hit the delete key, and now it's cut in half. And I can move it down, or I can move it to the back by going to Object, send it to the back. We'll make a quick copy of this one. Click and drag. So now I've got two teeth that I'm working with. Same thing for the back of the mouth for here. We'll make another half ellipse. I'm going to hold down my Option key. Click and drag. Of course, this one needs to be uh, medium brown, tan to medium brown. Ninety degrees, everything else is good. Let's cut it that one in half. Same thing. I'm using my white arrow to select just the top point, and when I delete it, get half of a circle, and we'll send this backwards. Send it to the back. So now I've got two teeth set up. If I need to make it smaller, remember you can select two of them and use your bounding box to, uh, to reposition that one. Let's group these together. Command G to group. Move it on top of here. It's coming together. All right. Let's see. The arms and the legs are pretty much the same thing. You'll start off with a circle. I'm going to go quickly and just make a tan to dark brown. And in this case, I've stretched out the circle, just the top point, to make this teardrop type shape. So with the white arrow, select this top and stretch it out, and that's how you can make the hand to be that way. Mm -hmm. Of course, it needs to be a negative 90, I think. There we go. Let's go from center point to that up there. And you can move it into position, make a copy of them, rotate it, Spread out that up there. All fun, all good. The hair is another tricky one. Remember we learned how to use the pencil tool? Uh, so I want you to use the pencil tool. Uh, let's see, if I jumped over one. Yep, medium brown to tan, so we're good. And just draw off some hair free-handed. You can give them a mohawk if you want. Notice that when I drew it off, it didn't have a fill to it, so I need to choose fill, turn on my gradient, and now it's filled in, and you can adjust the color of it as well. What are the ears made of? Triangles. Triangles. Very, very simple. For the background, now this is going to be another fun one. So with this one, just a regular rectangle for the background that goes from white to blue. We'll choose a sky blue. It's a 90 degree. Do y'all remember what the hotkey to send something to the back is? Command, drag. 
command bracket? Shift command bracket. Shift command bracket sends it all the way to the back. So front to the back. And since I have the blue already selected, when I choose to make the stars, I can add stars to the background and they're automatically light blue and dark blue as well. Y'all can add that up. Here's the next fun thing, is the grass at the very bottom. In the next class, hopefully in the next class, we can start using the, the pencil tools. This is a brush tool. And what I want you to do is to paint in the different uh, little grass strokes. And here's how we're going to do it. The paintbrush looks like a paintbrush. It's underneath your line segment tool. With it selected, we're going to turn off. We're going to choose a stroke color to be eh, dark green or whatever color green that you want it to be. And look over in your brushes palette. This is another palette that we'll get to. You can open it up. These are different kind of uh, media you can choose from. And I want you to choose one of these textured media from here. And with this one, you can click and drag and just make grass strokes. I've chosen one color of grass. All I'm doing is just clicking and dragging. If you change up the colors of grass, make it uh, light, medium, and dark, it tends to look a little bit more realistic. So darker type grass. But the brush tool acts just like the pencil tool, except it adds a um, kind of a texture to it. And we can, we're actually going to learn how to make our own different brushes as well in a later class period from there. Y'all go away. I'm having fun. All cool? So you guys, you're going to put, of course, all the little details into them. You can change them up a little bit how I'm looking for. The main thing is I'm seeing can you use the gradients appropriately and can you uh, manipulate the shapes as I'm uh, as we move forward. All cool. This one's the one you're going to print off. This one you're going to save it as an Illustrator file, and you're going to upload it to Moodle once you're finished. Okay. Turn your computers back over to you, 